Welcome to uh, our monthly meeting for the uh, first Friday of August. It's good to see uh, people in the uh, club rooms tonight. It's been a miserable day, but uh, good on you for making the effort to pop out tonight and uh, come and see Mark do his presentation on silos, uh, silos on the air. I'd like to uh, introduce Mark, VK3OHM, who's uh, very kindly agreed to uh, present on his uh, SIOTA program. Been running for two years and uh, I believe uh, quite a success. So, Mark? Welcome and thank you. Well, welcome everyone. Um, I'm heavy with cold tonight, so excuse the voice. I'll uh, struggle on. Um, we're here to talk about uh, a bit of a fun program that we put together. Um, hopefully to allow you just to have a fun day out doing something interesting with your radio. Let's get that going. Um, of course, the first question we had in this program is, what is a silo? Very simple question you would imagine, but my God, the definitional difficulties are quite huge. There's every shade and shape of things that look like silos out there, and some are and some aren't. Um, a silo, in our definition, is, is a large cylindrical concrete structure, usually for storing solid material, usually grain. And an important feature is it must have an elevator uh, to carry the contents to the top. They have existed since European settlement, but they really took off in 1916 when they built 200 silos in uh, New South Wales. This uh, network grew very, very rapidly to cover all the other states uh, to the point where every major town had a silo. However, the glory days of silos have passed and there's now only about 170 which are currently active. Most silos have been converted uh, to bunker storage. That's just a huge pile of grain sitting on the ground with a tarp over it. And they fill it with inert gas and uh, not very interesting. So they're not in the program. There are lots of things which look like silos which are not if they've got water in it, that's a water tank. If it's uh, in a cement mixing yard where they just tip stuff in the top and mix it and pour it out the bottom, that's not a silo either. Although it looks very much like a silo. So we've had to take some uh, executive decisions about what is and isn't a silo. And there was an extensive railway network built to support them. I think the silos came first and then the railways had to get, get out there to bring the grain back. Having said all that, there's still more than a thousand silos out there that I've managed to find. So the SIOTA program was the idea of Megan Woods and we have Megan here tonight. So you can blame her and any tricky questions you can ask Megan. Uh, Megan developed all the uh, SIOTA website, um, which was quite a challenging thing. It's actually, I don't think you realised how complicated it was going to be when you started. So it was very complicated as most things are, but it was a lot of fun, I think. Yeah. I prefer to remember it as fun. Um, I did a lot of the silo identification and curation and we're lucky enough to have Peter Fraser. I'm not sure what his job is, but it's his job to know where are all, where, where, where are all the high points around where you could put a mobile um, cell tower on and they just happen to be all the silos. So he could just list off all the silos in Australia Da, 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 like that. It was incredible. He, he managed to find, I think, in the end, 250 of them, yeah. which was astonishing. So 
so it's meant to be a fun um, program to give you a destination so that you don't have to hike to a, a soda summit if you don't want to, or you don't have to drive too far to get to a park because there's none near you. Silos are always easy to reach. They're always on the main road. They're usually on flat land. There's almost always a cafe nearby. And there's usually a whole group of them or a string of them along the railway line. So they're actually a perfect target for a very interesting and easy day trip. Um, just the towns they are in are quite interesting. Um, and they've had quite a few people just go along the highway and stop at every silo. They're every 40 miles. And uh, look at all the interesting things that are in the town. So just a good excuse to get out there, have a very easy day and play with the radio. Yeah, a couple of the radio clubs have organised a, a, a silo weekend. And... Uh, they have a bit of a blitz on the silos. There's plenty to choose from. Uh, it's incredibly easy. All you need is three contacts, which isn't difficult. And the activation zone for the silo is one kilometre. So, which sounds like a lot, but when you're in the inner city, you need it. Out in the country, not an issue, but if you're trying to activate the silo in Brunswick, you know, it's a bit challenging. So you need the kilometre. So activation is very, very easy. Now, there's about 1,100 silos have been identified. And that pattern should look familiar. That's the wheat belt, the Australian wheat belt. And there's a bit down here too. So there are actually silos in every single state. There's even one in the ACT, I found. I didn't want them left out. Um, so there are plenty, plenty to choose from. We're rather well served in Victoria. There's quite a few. Now, I've gone through every single silo and rated it. Um, there are quite a few silos which are part of the silo art trail. There are also silos out there which are not part of the silo art trail, which are painted. There are quite a few with um, advertising, aeroplane jelly, Don is good. Um, the Nilex one. So if they've got a painting on them, I think from memory there are 61 silos on the silo art trail and I've got 75 painted ones. So there's quite a few that are painted for other reasons. The next category is very interesting. Um, it's got his significant visual or historic interest. It's well worth the visit. If you're going out that way, it's well worth taking a trip to visit that particular silo. Um, next rung is, well, it's interesting. Yeah, it's worth the visit, but I couldn't call it very interesting. Then there's a whole category where, well, okay, technically it's a silo, but, you know, I wouldn't waste the time necessarily. Um, they're often just agribusiness where they sell stock feed and that sort of stuff. And they're just big uh, steel uh, silos. So yeah, they're a silo, but you know, I wouldn't bother. Um, there aren't any that are unrated. And I also indicate when a silo has expired um, unfortunately, there's quite a few of them get um, demolished. So and we had this horrible problem where I declared a silo and then someone told me it's gone, so I rubbed it out. And then someone called in and said, oh, I found another silo and I put it back. And they said, no, it's gone. 
So that's how we remember that, no, no, sorry, it's not actually there anymore. Now, I, the rest of the presentation is really just a, a very small sample of some of the more interesting silos that are out there. There's, oh, there'd be, there'd be a, more than a hundred, which are really quite interesting, but I'm not gonna show you a hundred silos. Um, this is a bit difficult to see, but um, on Cockatoo Island in Sydney Harbour, the convicts there dug in solid sandstone, 20 bottle shaped silos back in the very, very early days. And this is one which has been sliced through when they did some building works at Cockatoo Island. So they've taken, that's, that's what it is in sections. So there's a tiny little hole up there, which one man can barely fit through. And then they dug all this out. And there's 20 of them. Um, they're quite big, 5.7 metres deep. That would have been no fun at all, digging that out by hand with a candle, I imagine. Um, so if you're in Sydney, it's worthwhile going and having a visit to Cockatoo Island. Uh, this is uh, Tasmania, where they've turned a silo into a hotel. There's quite a few of these. Um, there's one in Collingwood, and I think there's I think there's two in Melbourne. There's another one in Tasmania that's been turned into an apartment block. I think they'd be awful. How would you hang a picture on the wall? <laughs> All the walls are curved. Um, we were going to have a really good one in Melbourne too. The, there was, a, I don't know if you remember the Porsche silo. That was all set to be turned into units. And then they said, uh, yeah, no, nah, I'm not going to bother and pulled it down. So there's at least, uh, there's three in Sydney like that, where they've turned them into pretty big hotels. I think that's what's gonna to happen to Nilex. It's gonna be, I never believe these things until I actually see it because the developers like to change their mind. That's another one that's, there's quite a lot of these historic ones. It'd be at least a hundred. Um, old fashioned brick ones. These ones are a view bank, uh, which is near Heidelberg. And that's just a shot from the road. It's very easy to, to get to and to see. So it's a lot of history associated with that. Um, there's the silo there. Very complicated history where they turned it into a, uh, uh, it was a barn and then it opened as a, I don't know what it was, but it's now a church. Well, it was a kindergarten, a land sales office, retail store, and it's now the local Lutheran church. So they do like to repurpose these things. I suspect they've all got heritage overlays on them so they can't just knock them down. There's lots of these type of silos, quite surprising out on, in Victoria, out on, out on the farms, they're everywhere. Um, they're usually brick, um, were built well before 1916. Um, and they're quite interesting. Another interesting one, another set of underground uh, silos at Stroud in New South Wales. 
these ones were they dug a hole and they made the silo out of brick and then put a cap on the top. And they even had four naval guns to protect them. From what? I do not know. I think it might have been the Russians or something like that. I mean, Stroud is significantly inland. So I think they were a little bit paranoid back in the day. Um, you used to be able to go in them. I'm not sure if you still can. I can think of a few health and safety issues. But I have seen a photo of one of them with a ladder. Yeah. <laughs> That's one you'll all be familiar with, I assume. The Is Dawn Is Good silo. It's one of the painted ones. It's not on the silo art trail. And then, of course, there is the silo art trail itself. Um, I believe there's currently 61, but every month or two there seems to be a new one comes along. If you are aware of a new painted one, let me know and I can flag it on the map. Now, there's a lot of website support for this. Um, there's the silos on the air website with a very easy to remember URL. There you'll find the rules. There aren't that many rules. I think there's 10 rules, that's all you need. It's not a very complicated program. You'll get access to a map of all the silos. It's uh, Google Maps. So you can zoom in uh, and know exactly where it is. You can get full details on the silo and you can even get a street view uh, image of the silo. So you can have a look at where you're going and you can work out, well, where am I going to park and all those sorts of, and where's the cafe? Um, for over 1,100 silos at the moment. You can upload your log. The site also has lots of leaderboards, the top activator, the top chaser, top silo to silo, top activated silos. There are no awards. There are just kudos for being at the top of the leaderboards. And it's, um, some people take it very seriously, um, a little too seriously at times, I suspect. It's quite competitive. And you can download a list of silos if you want to look at it offline. It's fully supported at Parks and Peaks, just like SOTA and um, WWFF. It's a uh, full list of silos. And you can also spot silos at Parks and Peaks, just like a park. There is a uh, VK portal log, which we use for soda and parks. It also works for silos and the parks. And there's also uh, Android and there's um, the I iOS version. The Parks and Peaks app also supports silos. So there's full support for silos just like the other programs. Anyway, just, to, just uh, zoom in, zoom into somewhere, zoom into somewhere in Victoria, in Melbourne. Just keep zooming in. Zoom in a bit more, a bit more. Okay, now just stop there. So what you can see is the pins showing you where the silos are. Uh, there's one over here in Cremorne. 
just click on the, the silo in Cremorne. And that's, oh, that's the Nilex silo. So it's got lots of information there and you can go to Street View. So you can work out, well, where can I activate that and still be within one kilometre? Tom, Tom, Tom has already activated that one. So he found some. There's a, there's a park underneath the freeway. Yeah, all right. So just, just go exit out of that. Go back, you know, exit out. Yeah. So just zoom out a bit. You'll see that. In the general area, there's lots and lots and lots of silos. And now go go north. There's a couple of coal stream. Now, as you get out into the country, you'll see they're all in straight lines. They're all they're all along the railway lines. So it makes a really good day trip just to start at one end and drive along and have a look at the, the little towns they're in are you know, quite fascinating. And you will never had any reason to go there. Well, a silo is a good reason to go there. And there's... Uh, uh, Yeah, you have to move up the road. There it is. It's, it's not meant to be a very challenging program. It's meant to be fun. Mm. <laughs> so look, there's plenty to choose from. Um, it'll take you quite a while, I think, to visit a thousand of them. Well, let's click click on it. There's no, there's no street view. I don't, I don't know. So, yeah, click. Yeah. Yeah, we sort of stretched the definition of silo a bit, I think, to we wanted to have at least one or two in the Northern Territory. All right, we'll click on that one.
So the street view is quite handy because you can make decisions as well, do I want to bother? And if I did, where would I park? Yeah, I'd probably bother. See, those other things, they're not silos, they're tanks. <coughs> yeah, we've had a few, well, we haven't had mishaps, but some people insist on driving as far, as close as possible to the silo um, and resting up against it practically. And we're going, no, 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 no. <laughs> There's a kilometre for a reason. Um, and they're on private property, and many of them. So you don't need to be that close. Just in the general area. Yeah. All right. That's... Mark, there's a question from David at Three AU. Um, are those silos in Heidelberg uh, in Banyal Road, just along from the old Three XY AW transmitter site? Pass. You have, to, easy. you have to go to the map and uh, have a look. Oh yes, another comment there. Yes, they are. Yep. Believe it or not, all that grass is now housing. Oh really? Oh, you've almost missed it. I've got a question for you, uh, Mark. How much uh, overhead is there for managing this uh, this site and uh, the administration of it, given that uh, no doubt there's a bit of work involved? Because Megan and I designed it, there's almost nothing to do. I mean, there was an awful lot of work to set it up, to create it, to write the code <coughs> and create the tools that allow us to, to generate the data, et cetera, et cetera. But in terms of day-to-day -day admin, nothing. Um, like all good websites. It sounds like that's, a, that's another story in its own right, how, uh, how you brought it all together, the technical side of it. So well done. Any questions from the floor? Any questions from uh, our friends in Zoom? Bring up the leaderboard. Okay. PAS. PAS does a, a weekend trip along and does a string and he writes like six pages on each village that he goes through and it's absolutely fascinating. Marcus, there's another question from Zoom. Uh, is there an agreed frequency for the CIOTA? No. Uh, you must have three contacts, two of which must be HF. And that's it. Okay, so given that you can spot yourself or someone can spot you, it's a bit of a given then, I suppose. Isn't Most it? people use the SOTA uh, or Parks frequencies, but no, any frequency you like. Um, the leaderboards restart each year. Um, otherwise, oh, PS has run away with it again. He's having a quiet year this year. Last year he was, oh, I think he was up to about 90 by this time. Um, yeah. It's, it's like soda in the parks. We encourage you to stay there for about half an hour. Don't just fire up, get three contacts and bugger off, hang around for a little while and you get more, more points the longer you hang around. So just scroll down that. You can get on, on the activator leaderboard, but just scroll down a bit. There's silo to silo contacts. There's chases. So you, Peter Fraser, uh, Peter Freeman, he's always chasing. And they're the top silos that have been activated. MAFRA. You can see how many times a silo has been activated. So you can just go and pick one that's never been activated if you want to. Um, just go back to the top activated ones again. It's a bit surprising. Brunswick's been activated three times. Brunswick's not easy. It's in the heart of Brunswick and 
I don't know where people park. Just down further. Sirius is a thousand and two. Oh, there we are. Pick um, New South Wales. Just click on New South Wales. And there's a comprehensive list of every single silo in New South Wales. So, Mark, if um, someone's touring and they observe uh, that there's a change or appears to be a change, how do they notify uh, you of uh, said change? From the, from the map, when you open up the details of the silo, there's a, a link which says report issue. So you can report that, hang on, this silo is not actually here anymore or it's become uh, painted or I disagree with your rating of very interesting. It's actually boring. So, or you can also report, I found a new silo and, and here it is. So you can, you can give feedback via the map and I'll, I'll get that and I'll go, oh, yeah, maybe, <laughs> maybe you're right. How do you uh, how do you make those uh, silo names? Is that just arbitrarily assigned? Um, most silos are named after the town that they're in, um, but famous ones like Nilex. I've called it Nilex because you know everyone knows what Nilex is. There's one called Aeroplane Jelly. Everyone knows where the aeroplane. Do they? I don't know. Um, so sometimes they have a, a brand name if they're a product related. Um, and then using that name, it gets uh, mangled to come up with that three letter code <coughs> with an algorithm too complicated to explain. Yeah, the comment was that uh, the database is uh, <coughs> available for download uh, for anyone. Every, every silo has a link to something. Um, usually the Wikipedia page for the town. Yeah. Uh, people want to know that because uh, the VK Shires contest, they want the Shire ID. Um, hopefully it's a bit of fun. And as I said earlier, some clubs have made a weekend of it and a lot of people have got a bit of enjoyment out of it. So good on them. All right. Does that uh, pretty much wrap things up, Mark? Yep, that's it. Okay. Look, on behalf of uh, EMDRC and uh, everyone present on Zoom and <coughs> this evening, I'd like to thank you both for... Uh, giving up your evening to uh, come and give us uh, an outline on uh, such a worthy uh, activity. Good on you. Thanks, Mark. And I ask people just to show their applause or their gratitude. <laughs>